Hi there. This is Jake. I'm from Tassasa Road Trips, where we strive to be our own man. We, on this channel, will bring you ventures that most people would just love to take if they had the chance. So sit back, enjoy the trip, and don't forget, when it's all said and done, be your own man. Have a blessed day. Hey, good morning. It's Jake here from Tessas Road Trips. Uh, we are uh, about to go get a shower here in Quartzsite. Uh, we had a great night's sleep here at a BLM place, uh, Bureau of Land Management. Uh, and it was, uh, it was, it was pretty good because, uh, last time I stayed somewhere, it was, it was a little bit choppy. So, um, we're here, we're going to go get a shower and then we're going to head on to Phoenix and get some breakfast and, uh, get our spring training on. All right. Stay tuned. All right. So we are now pulling out of Love's. Uh, something magical about a shower after you got a day of stank on you, but uh, Loves provides that, and it provides a nice hot shower uh, with water pressure. Sometimes that is an underrated thing in showers, but uh, I always appreciate a good hot shower with good water pressure. All right, so we are now kind of headed off into uh, Phoenix from Quartzsite. Uh, we are going to be stopping at the Goodyear Stadium. Um, in Goodyear, which is just outside um, Phoenix Major. So that will be where we see you next. We'll talk to you in a few. So just about anywhere you're from, catching sunrise or catching sunset, um, it's a beautiful thing. It's just a reminder of uh, God's goodness to us all. And so this is just a little bit of pre-sunrise here in the Sonoran Desert uh, on our way to Phoenix. Uh, so just thought you might like to catch a glimpse of that. It is beautiful and it just reminds you of uh, God and His goodness. So we are here at Goodyear Ballpark. You can see here that um, it is the home for spring training for the Cleveland Indians and for the Cincinnati Reds. So, three years ago, I turned 50. I'm now 53, and one of the plans three years ago was that I would come to Goodyear Ballpark and watch a game. Well, at this point, that was when we hit the pandemic. I was literally one day away from coming to the game and uh, the pandemic hit and put pretty much everything out of kibosh. So the best I can do right now in my short weekend is pretty much come to the ballpark and take a look at it. So this is about as far as we're gonna get today. And uh, here we go. Again, this is Goodyear Ballpark, home of the spring training, home of the Cleveland Guardians now, and the Cincinnati Reds. All right, so we are here at American Family Fields of Phoenix. This is the spring training home of the Milwaukee Brewers. So we're just here to take a look. Try to get, we're not gonna get into the stadium, but we can take a look at it. We'll just count this as part of our morning walk. Ooh, the gates are open. Maybe I can get in and just take pictures. Let's see if they flag me down or not.
last time I was here, I wasn't here because of the pandemic. So, you know, let's see what we can do. All right, real quick. There you can see a picture spot for American Family Fields. And real quick, this reminds me of, well, obviously spring training, but it also reminds me of very much the college atmosphere of many different colleges, although probably a few more seats than most colleges. All right, and so again, this was American Family Fields. Home. So in just a minute, you'll see a little bonus feature of our spring training. Breakfast. It's pretty popular looking. Hopefully we can get in. All right. So that was Matt's big breakfast that I just had. Um, big, probably not huge, but the portions were satisfying. I am not hungry at all. Um, the food was really good. The eggs were cooked perfectly. I had them over medium. Uh, hash browns were uh, not what I expected, but they had a good flavor. Uh, they weren't real crisp, but they had a good flavor. And then um, the sausage, that might have been one of the better sausages I've ever had. They were well seasoned. They had a little bit of a spice to them, which I always appreciate. Uh, a little bit more spice on that. And then the service was amazing. Uh, it was a team service thing. Uh, my server was Josh, and um, he did a great job. They filled my coffee, which, by the way, it, it's right up there with the best coffee I've ever had from a small cafe. So uh, it's coffee house type coffee. It's really good. So um, I'm going to give this place a 4.6, which for me to get above 4.5, you're doing something. So um, good job, Matt's Big Breakfast. Hopefully we can get you some more business through this. You guys have the best day. We're going to go off to... Um, uh, my buddy's uh, son's uh, travel ball tournament, and we're going to enjoy a, a, a little bit of uh, youth baseball next. So stay tuned. All right, so we are here at Peoria, Arizona, watching a youth baseball game. So in this part of the video, we have the angel game that I attended. Um, and I want to narrate through some of it because it was a really um, touching game. A lot of things happen in this game that just will move you as a human being. And this is why life is so much better and so much more than just sports. Uh, as, and so much more than just being male or female. Just You'll see here in just a second. They're about to announce a man who had retired recently from the military and um, had cancer. And after 190 sessions of chemotherapy, finally had overcome uh, cancer. And so uh, both teams, the Angels and the Diamondbacks, uh, lined up on the first and the third base uh, foul lines and congratulated his home run for life. And, and I mean, let me tell you, it was just emotional and um, just puts everything in perspective. And so, uh, you know, he's uh, being congratulated as he's rounding the bases. Uh, he's got the shortstop and second baseman 
congratulating him at second. And then as he rounds the third, the Diamondbacks are congratulating him. And, man, what just a moving moment. And then he gets to home plate, and he gets to uh, get, gets congratulated by the, uh, the two managers of the baseball teams. And so uh, just a great moment, uh, just puts everything in perspective. And I was so glad that uh, the Angels had the time to um, dedicate the, uh, uh, putting some focus on something that mattered. So uh, in the rest of this video, you're going to see, until I start narrating again, just a bunch of clips from the game. So enjoy the clips from the game, and we'll be with you here in just a second. Just got out of dinner. I uh, stopped at a place called Los Sombreros here in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, had a Yelp rating of a four. I would give it a 4.4. It was not bad. Um, honestly, the rice was well seasoned, but it it, it was uh, okay. But the beans were a little bit runny. But I will tell you this much. Uh, that pork carnitas that I got... Uh, was probably one of the better cooked carnitas I've ever had in my life. Uh, it was moist inside, and usually that does not happen with a smoked t uh, restaurant type carnitas. Uh, but man, it was so good. And then um, on top of that, uh, they had a um, uh, a salsa that was pretty good too. Um, the service there was excellent. They had another uh, group of team servers. Uh, I had Jamie as my server. She is pictured here, as you can see. And uh, she was fantabulous. Uh, I would recommend this place without any uh, exception. Again, all I had was a carnitas, but if you like Mexican food, it was pretty straight up Mexican food. So... Anyhow, that is uh, the Los Sombreros here in Scottsdale, Arizona on Scottsdale Road. Uh, give it a shot. It's not too bad. Have a great day. We'll see you in a bit. All right. We are at Sloan Park, home of the Cubs spring training. So um, I'm just going to kind of walk around the park here for a little bit and uh, get a glimpse of it uh, the best we can. All right, well, this is one of the entries. This is the home plate entry, which usually is the main entrance. So I don't know that uh, we'll get as lucky as getting in the gates, but we will certainly get as far as we can with this. Again, this is Sloan Park, home of those Chicago Cubs for spring training. Well, this may be the best we can do. Pretty place. It kind of reminds me of Chicago a little bit. Uh, one of the nice things about this place, though, is they do have a large shade uh, structure on both sides. And uh, compared to some other school, uh, other uh, places here in um, Phoenix, that is a most welcome thing in this land of sun. So, all yeah, right, so now park, we're going to head over Chicago to Cubs. Hohoken Park. I'm pretty sure that is where the A's, sorry, the Athletics, have their uh, spring training facility. But that is our next stop. And, uh, yeah. all right, here we go. So, we are now at the Oakland Athletics training facility for the spring. This is Ho Hokum Stadium. I am probably mispronouncing that, 
but this is the look of Hohokam Stadium. They are not playing here today, so unfortunately I have no way of uh, seeing their game, and it looks like they're pretty locked up tight. And we won't be able to see the field from here. But Hohokam Stadium, the A's, which is much better than they used to play for their spring training. All right. Well, there you go. Ho hokum. All right. Be with you again in just a minute. Here we are at Salt River Fields, the home of the Rockies and Arizona Diamondbacks spring training. So this is the best I can do on a view of the field. But uh, let's start. Look, let's. Take a little walk around the facility. It's actually a very beautiful facility. Um, you can see over here the stadium roof, but it really is pretty. So let's go take a little walk here. See, the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Colorado Rockies, Salt River Fields. Uh, it really is a pretty facility. It looks like it's one of the newer ones. It does have lights. Uh, they have a unique kind of look to them, but uh, yeah. So this is Salt River Fields, home, spring training home of the right. Diamondbacks. Again, all right. Welcome to Scottsdale Stadium. This is the spring training home of the San Francisco Giants. Um, just kind of an interesting thing this this time around while I was in Phoenix uh, happened to run into the World of Baseball Classic uh, which is probably what they're getting ready for tonight the game probably starts at nine o'clock so you got people taking batting practice right now and I'm a little early for that so um, anyway I just want to walk around the place here a little bit and see what we can see while we are here See how we can get in So this is the team store. Each of these stadiums has their own store. Uh, their official merchandise, if you will. This one, of course, is closed because it's well, it's after 6:30 local time. see it but one of the things you probably did see at some of the other stadiums was the fact that there are many many fields that teams practice on and they do different things at those different fields so for example one field might be designated for pitchers and catchers and one field might be designated for hitters working on some specific skill set maybe bunting or hit and run or something like that so well here we go here's the front the giant spring training and again you can see the arizona and the american flags god bless you so sessions more concessions and uh this is it this is uh, scottsdale stadium all right, looking forward to seeing the game here soon. So now I'll be right with you again. That we visited the stadiums pretty much in the center and east side of Phoenix. This sets us up for tomorrow's visits, where we're going to visit 
uh, Peoria, Glendale, Surprise, Arizona, and take a look at some of those stadiums and the different teams that work out there. We will go to a game tomorrow. Tomorrow's game is at 110, and it will be the Angels at the White Sox uh, training facility in Glendale. And in the meantime, we are going to continue on. We're going to head towards our stay for the night, which is at an undisclosed So before we leave uh, our baseball destinations, I do want to have our topic of the day. Our topic of the day today is going to be youth sports. Uh, we did have a chance to go see some youth sports today. Um, and I want to compare that to yesteryear, you know, um, when my grandparents grew up, they just played sports didn't have anything organized that little league was kind of a thing it wasn't really much of a thing unless you were in a big big city and then when my uh dad and uh you know in the 50s was a young young boy they started to have little leagues and stuff like that a little bit uh organized sports started to happen a little bit more but no one really specialized and so that started to ha well then you know i get into my childhood and the in the early 80s and there was still everybody played different sports uh, everybody was involved in multiple sports i think uh, a large number of us were involved in large in multiple sports and now you almost have to choose and i i don't know if i find that a good thing i mean one on the one positive thing about choosing a sport and and specializing it and being involved with it and be, doing all the travel stuff is that you get good skill sets or better skill sets. Let's just say that some of the coaching is really bad, but some of it's pretty good. And so uh, those that excel can go on to the next teams and whatnot, and they can progress through the, through the system and and become pretty good travel ball, uh, on pretty good travel ball teams to the point where they become on national teams if they're that good. Um, anyway, so I, I, I don't... I have a hard time with it because I've, you know, when I was growing up, I played both football and baseball. I wasn't good enough to play basketball at the high school I was at, but I certainly played those other sports and I, and I feel like I would have missed out on something, you know, and football, I would have probably missed out on some of the toughness I needed to deal with some of the injuries that I was going to have playing sports and other, uh, other, um, sports, but you know, uh, you know, and then playing, uh, baseball obviously it taught me a lot of balance and it was something that I was able to do in high school and beyond and so that was um it's kind of a you know but I but I never really specialized in anything I I mean at most I in high school I played uh well I'm sorry in middle school I played flag football through the school and that was sort of quasi organized against other other middle schools and then in high school of course I played football tackle football and then in baseball, uh, I didn't really specialize. We didn't, I didn't go to special trainers. I didn't go to special coaches. I just kind of went and uh, played on American Legion teams during the summer. And that was just something to do during the summer. Uh, and, you know, it, and it didn't really interfere with football because football was happening in the morning and American Legion happened in the afternoon because, you know, they understood that dads are doing their job and then coaching that in the evening. And so, um, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure where I stand on it. I think there's probably some good things about it. I mean, you're certainly going to come out with better skill sets than you used to. But, uh, yeah, I, I just think that every every kid should be involved in a sport. Uh, if you're good at it, then maybe specialize in it. However, uh, play a couple. You might find out you love baseball, but, man, you might find out that you're a world beater in football or in basketball or lacrosse or whatever. So uh, my suggestion is, you know, when they're young, let them play a lot of things, find out what they like, uh, you know, and then try to steer them into something that they're good at because I'm, they're probably, even though they may like something, they might be better at something and enjoy that too. So anyway, just a couple of uh, thoughts that I had on youth sports. Um, I, I, I think sometimes it gets, gets a little bit overboard with some of the travel. Hi there. This is Jake. I'm from Tassasa Road Trips, where we strive to be our own man.
we on this channel will bring you ventures that most people would just love to take if they had the chance. So sit back, enjoy the trip, and don't forget, when it's all said and done, be your own man. Have a blessed day.